In this episode, I shall throw some light on the scripture known as Gadya Trayam, an exalted work of Sri Ramanuja Acharya, the great Acharya who revitalized the teachings of the Sri Vaishnava Sampradayam, which has its roots in Mother Mahalakshmi and our eternal father Sriman Narayana. The Gadya Trayam consists of three pieces of prose. The number three has great significance in the Sri Vaishnava Sampradayam. The Vaishnava sages usually carry three pieces of long staff that represent purification at the thought, word and deed level. It also represents the three aspects of existence, Chit, Achit and Brahman. In the Sampradayam, Chit and Achit represent the Jiva and Maya Tattva, namely the animate and inanimate. Brahman here represents the base on which both Chit and Achit are dependent. Brahman is verily Bhagavan in the Sampradayam, full of infinite attributes out of which the Jiva and Maya Tattva just possess a minimal number of attributes when compared to the infinite qualifications of Brahman or Bhagavan. In the Sri Vaishnava Sampradayam, Brahman is essentially Bhagavan with form and is categorically called Sriman Narayana or Sri Mahavishnu. Mahavishnu is infinite well, Chit and Achit are limited, although both these dependent entities are infinite in terms of age similar to that of Bhagavan. Yet, both these entities are dependent on Bhagavan. This is a brief description of the fundamental understanding of the Sri Vaishnava Sampradayam. The Gadya Trayam is very much connected to the rudiments of the Sri Vaishnava Sampradayam. Sri Bhagavat Ramanuja Acharya has used the suffix traya in Gadya Traya to highlight the importance of the number three in his work of prose. The Gadya Trayam has three parts namely the Sharanagati Gadyam, Sriranga Gadyam and Vaikuntha Gadyam. The essence of Sri Ramanuja's teachings is present in the Gadya Trayam. The three subsections of the Gadya Trayam are the Sharanagati Gadyam, the Sriranga Gadyam and the Vaikuntha Gadyam. The Sharanagati Gadyam is a set of holy conversations between Sri Ramanuja and the Lord of his heart, Sri Ranganatha, who is the Lord of Sri Ranganatha Puram Dham. The second section of the Gadya Trayam, namely the Sriranga Gadyam, is the author seeking refuge at the feet of Lord Ranganatha. The third and final section of the prose is the instance where he outlines to other devotees how they should seek surrender at the feet of Lord Ranganatha. Sri Ramanuja Acharya had a direct encounter with the Supreme Lord Sri Mahavishnu, also known popularly in the South as Sri Ranganatha and the Divine Mother Sri Mahalakshmi Devi. The result was this work in a state of trance known as Gadyatrayam. The exposition of the holy mantra of Sri Vaishnava Sampradayam, known as Dvayam, and the description of the highest abode of Sri Vaikuntha is enunciated in the work called Gadyatrayam. A reader of Gadyatrayam starts his prayers by taking refuge under the most elevated of the devotees of the Lord, Sri Ramanuja Acharya, whose grace and kindness towards the surrendered individual knows no bounds. The devotees of Sri Ramanuja consider his feet as only pure gold and all other things of the world as mere pieces of straw. Other than the ocean of compassion and kindness Sri Ramanuja Acharya, everything else has no significance. This is the position of the magnanimous Acharya. The Lord is sold out to the devotee of his devotee. This is the one-line purport of the Bhakti scriptures. There is no greater devotee of the Lord than Sri Ramanuja. So, if we are to accept Sri Ramanuja as our sole benefactor, automatically the Lord will be sold out to us. This is the most intelligent way to make the Lord sell out to us. There is perhaps no other technique to gain the Lord's love. Sri Ramanuja has protected the extract or essence of the Vedas known as Vedanta, just as camphor is prevented from evaporating into thin air by preserving it in a golden Casket. Sri Ramanuja Acharya seeks refuge under Sri Mahalakshmi Devi, who is the Lord's foremost devotee.
perhaps she is the lord's first devotee shri ramanuja has just done what we are still trying to do shri ramanuja acharya knows that shri narayana will be sold out to him if he becomes the lord's devotee's devotee shrimati mahalakshmi is essentially the adi guru of the shri vaishnava sampradayam and shri ramanuja acharya safely takes shelter under the foremost of mothers the great mahadevi is also called shri devi shri ramanuja very intelligently puts his request to his eternal guru shrimati shri devi he says that like an innocent child requests its mother he is requesting shri devi to recommend his name to the great lord shriman narayana and persuade him to grant all his wishes the supreme lord is undoubtedly an ocean of kindness and compassion but if shri devi recommends the acharya's name to the lord then he shall have a much better chance of getting all his spiritual desires fulfilled shri devi is the universal mother and has a tender heart and she can never turn down her innocent child's plea this is the innocent plea of the acharya who sees himself at the feet of his mother praying for her compassion and mercy this is perhaps the most elevated mood of a bhakta in the mood of a helpless child mahadevi or shri devi who is the empress of the universe and equal in glory to the lord full of embellishments equal to that of the lord of lord shriman narayana at the same time shri devi possesses the compassionate heart of a million mothers the great acharya says that there can be none like shri devi and rightfully takes complete refuge under her pristine holy feet shri ramanuja wants to experience the supreme lord in full free from all illusory experiences with one pointed concentration experiencing the lord shri ramanuja acharya says is boundless love that boundless state is non different from the state of complete surrender the upsurge of this state is also known as rati or purified concentrated fine emotion unknown to this material platform shri ramanuja prays at the feet of shri devi that he should surrender himself without any interruption and be bestowed with the opportunity to serve the lord a devotee is a devotee only when he wills to offer unsullied service at the feet of his guru and through guru to bhagwan shri ramanuja thus wants to serve his divine parents namely shri devi and shriman narayana thus he seeks permission from shri devi his eternal preceptor